Apps. Apple just introduced iOS 9 at WWDC, and we finally got the first beta on our phone. Now it's only the first one, so not all the cool features are here yet, but we're going to look at the first ones that have come to the beta on both our iPhone and our iPad. There are cool brand new features on iOS 9 Beta 1 that we're going to check out today, and one of the first ones is the Spotlight Search. Now it's over here now when you swipe over, much like it is on Android phones, and it'll show you some suggestions of your contacts and apps that you've used a lot, places that are nearby, and different news items. You can also do a lot of searches here, so I can search for, say, Digital Trends, and Digital Trends will pop up, the application that I have, and I can launch right into it. Now this is also where uh, the new proactive smart search features are going to come in. So this is going to get a lot of updates and it's going to learn my behavior and after a while it's going to start prioritizing the things that I really use a lot and it will know what I need. So it might put up like boarding passes or things like that. There's also a brand new wallet app which is taking over for Passbook. And I'm not going to open it up because I don't want you to see my credit card. But it's pretty cool, and if you haven't used Apple Pay yet, it's going to be even better with this new option, because you're going to have rewards cards in there. So you can pop in your CVS card or whatever you have. Now there's also a brand new Find My Friends app, which will give you suggestions of friends who are nearby. Obviously none of mine are nearby, either that or they have Android phones. But basically it uses AirDrop and it just finds people that are nearby you, so that way you can contact them and get in touch. Pretty cool little feature. We also have iCloud Drive. Now this is an optional app that lets you kind of manage what's in your iCloud Drive. I don't actually have anything in there right now, but if you did, you'd see like different files for pages or numbers or things like that. We also have a brand new addition to the Maps app, which is Transit. Now if you live in New York City, you've been waiting for Transit to come to the iPhone forever. And finally it's available in Maps. Of course, most people have started relying on Google Maps instead, but now you can actually start using Apple Maps if you live in an area with mass transit. It's only available in a few cities right now, but it looks like it's a pretty great feature, and it seems to me that uh, Apple has definitely updated its Maps app, so we're going to test it out and let you know if it's any better than it was before. We also have a few updates in the Music app. Now, the big new music feature isn't here yet because they're obviously holding that for the iOS 8.4 beta, which is coming relatively soon, I believe in July. But you can see it's got the new layout, so you can see the albums in kind of a different view. The alphabetical listings are a little bit more subtle, and we've got recently added music on the top. The radio stations also look quite different, and I'm not sure if this is going to be an indication
found on the web. <laughs> so it didn't work right now, but there is a feature with Siri where she will be able to understand natural language better, and you'll be able to say, pull up pictures from today, and she'll pull up the pictures that I took today. Obviously, she's not there yet in this beta, but she'll get there, so don't worry. And last but not least, we have a keyboard update here. So with this iPhone 6 Plus, we're going to flip it over, and you'll be able to see there's a brand new uh, cut and paste and a few other buttons here on the keyboard. So that should make it pretty easy for you to copy and paste things before it was a bit of a hassle. Of course, this is only if you use the default iOS keyboard. I usually use SwiftKey but I've got it on this for now so you can see it in action. Now there's one more incredible iOS 9 beta 1 feature that you can only get on the iPad and it is the split screen view. Now this is something that we've been waiting for for a very long time because it's great to be able to multitask on a tablet, especially when you have one of the iPad Airs with this nice big screen. So if you want to pull up a second app and have two apps running at the same time on the same page, you just swipe over from the corner and you can go through a couple different apps. Now right now, it's limited to Apple apps because the developers haven't had a chance to get their hands on this until very, very recently. Uh, but we do expect to see most apps supporting this feature. You can select the app that you want and then you can adjust to whatever proportions you want your screen to be. So you can have this notes be nice and small or you can have it be half and half. There are a couple different options here and it's really easy to just drag it and move it back and forth. It's very simple, very nice. Now both apps are running independently, so what you do on this one won't happen on this one. And that's great because sometimes, you know, you're trying to read an article and you need to take notes. So you can just pop in a note over here and be typing along so that way you know what's going on. And uh, it's right over here in this app, but it doesn't affect this one. Except that the keyword pops up because it's notes. But this is a really excellent feature that we've been waiting for for a long time and it's pretty great that we finally have it now. And when you're done with the app and you want to switch out, you just pull it down and it shrinks and then you have your choices again or you can flip back and out to no longer have multitasking. So that was just a quick look at iOS 9 on both the iPhone and the iPad.